Okay, now you have seen all the theoretical machinery we need to be able to handle Taylor series in a comprehensive manner. So here is a strategy for finding Taylor series of a function. You are given a function f, you differentiate it several times and evaluate the derivatives at c, f of c, f prime of c, f double prime of c and so on and so forth. These are numbers, right? When you evaluate them at a given c, then you get numbers out of this. Try to recognize a pattern in these numbers so that you can make a you know, general formula for the nth term. Then use that and use the Taylor template to make the series f of c plus f prime of c, x minus c, f double prime of c over 2 factorial x minus c square and so on and so forth. Third step, find the interval of convergence of this series. Okay? Find where this series converges. And finally, within this interval, right, it converges, it doesn't mean it has to converge to f, right? Within this interval, then check, use the error theorem to see if the nth error goes to zero, to check if it indeed converges to f. Okay? Um, now, we, this is the general strategy. Uh, we have seen already the Taylor series for a whole bunch of things, for sine of x, for natural log, for e of x, e to the x, and things like that. So, when we encounter some more functions, we will try to see if we can relate those functions to existing functions by some basic operations. So, let's take an example. We're not necessarily always going to use this strategy from steps, you know, one to four to construct a new Taylor series because that sometimes is too much work. Let me give you an example here. Let's take the example of sine f of x equals sine of x cube. Okay? Now, if you started um, using the, this, uh, the previous uh, guideline strategy, what will be the first derivative? First derivative is 3x squared cosine of x cube. Right? Second derivative. Now I have to use product rule, right? So you have neg uh, negative sine of this, another 3x square will come out. Negative 9x to the power 4 sine of x cubed plus 6x times cosine of x cubed. Right? And I mean, things are already looking pretty scary right now, right? So Doing higher derivatives, it may not be easy to see the pattern in Mangalore work. But notice that this is sine of x cube. Right? We already know that sine of x is x minus x cube over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 1 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial and so on. This is sine of x, so what we can do, this is the composition of the sine function and the cubic function. We can plug x cube in here. So what we can do is we say sine of x cube would be x cube, right? This was the same x minus x cube. So whatever is here, cube, x to 9 over 3 factorial plus whatever was the argument to the power 5. So x cube to the power 5 is x to the power 15. Or 5 factorial minus x to the power 21 or 7 factorial and so on and so forth. And this gives you very quickly uh, Taylor series for the sine of x cube, right? So, in general, as much as possible, when you're given f of x, right, try to see how that f of x relates to some simple functions for which you've already constructed your Taylor or Maclaurin series and see how it relates by addition, right, subtraction, multiplication, division, right? What are the operations? We have here, this was an example of composition of functions, composition, right? And also differentiation, and integration. Okay? So the strategy would be always 
uh, as much as possible given a function, try to relate it to some basic functions e to the x sine of x, cosine of x, some polynomials, and see how it relates to them using one of these operations. Then you do that same operation on the powers or the power or Taylor series of the elementary function to get the Taylor series for the new function. Okay. Um, so this was an example of that where we had a composition going on. Okay. Now uh, we have seen Taylor series for some simple functions. There's one more kind of series we need to see called the binomial series, and we shall see that in the next lecture.